Hello and welcome back to Zero Cool Gaming and today we're going to be doing a review of a game called Alice Madness Returns. Come now, Alice. It's only a dream. It's not a dream. It, it's a memory. And it makes me sick. Now, focus. Wait. You're floating again. Weightless. A cipher. Relax. Oh, I'm in hell. Forget it. Abandon that memory. It's unproductive. Go to Wonderland. Now, this is a very interesting game, um, and there's a lot to it, and it goes over a subject that is hard to discuss. So, I guess let's get into it. So the game starts where you meet Alice in the care of a psychologist who believes that Putting memory blocks in people's brain is the best way to get them to recover from emotional and traumatic trauma. Um, and the beginning of the story starts with Alice going through a type of his hypnosis therapy where she's put into a dream state ask to go to Wonderland and then describe what's happening there and that is what she does and as things start to break down and the dream itself starts to become frightening to her the doctor wakes her from her half state of awakeness and then tells her that uh, she needs to forget the past and that's the best way for her to be able to move forward and then he asks her to go pick up some pills from a type of pharmacy and she agrees to do that so she leaves the psychiatric ward well it's not really a psychiatric ward it's more like a, a home for um, mentally harmed children. And on her way to pick up these pills, she gets distracted by a white cat that takes her down into a alleyway where she meets a nurse, a nurse that she's known for many years at this point. And that nurse asks her to come to her place and she tells her that she'll um, that she'll let her know where her rabbit is uh, for a few shillings and basically the nurse is extorting her for money um, as well as uh, threatening her in a way by saying that she's heard this heard Alice say things that um, essentially amount to her admitting her guilt to murdering her own family and um, she tells her that her silence comes cheap um, all of this stress of course causes her to um, kind of pass out at the nurse's place and end up back in Wonderland and of course she's met by the Cheshire Cat who leads her to the Vorpal Blade 
which is the first weapon that you get in this game. And uh, he also leads her to the Drink Me Bottle, which will allow you as the player character, and will allow Alice in that respect, to shrink at will. And uh, all of these mechanics um, are used throughout the game. You collect some memories, uh, broken memories, throughout Wonderland that have been suppressed and blocked by the psychiatrist that you're currently under the care of, as well as uh, defeat different enemies that are a direct result of the um, doctor's um, influence over your dreams and psychological stability and you know you, you fight different you fight rune creatures you fight uh, bolt flies um, eventually you run across the duchess and she asks you to um, pepper pig snouts for her to get those pig snouts to come back to her place so that she can cook them up and eat them and she gives you a pepper grinder which essentially works as a gun in this game and uh, of course you go out and you pepper the pig snouts and they bloat up and then they take off and usually when they bloat up and take off they leave uh, some sort of a gift for you and it, it usually amounts to a couple of flowers and some teeth teeth being the form of currency that you have in this game and it's used to upgrade your different weapons that you collect throughout the game itself and flowers are your health bar um, and as you go through the game you'll run across snails or at least snail shells that you can enter and each time you enter one it's a kind of a trial and there's different types of trials some of them are just uh, oh what do you call those like riddles and others are time trials while others are you know how many enemies can you survive how many waves of enemies can you survive um, I like the riddles they're interesting there's no fighting involved um, and the other two are kind of self-explanatory uh, one of them is actually kind of easy if you think about it all you got to do is run until the time runs out you don't have to kill anything and the third one is actually the hardest type of trial because it's not a time trial or anything like that you literally have to kill everything in order to win so you know it, it's like that but every time that you complete um, for these snails um, and you win each time because you, you have to win for not just engage in four of them but actually win each time um, your health bar will increase allowing you to have more flowers or rose petals um, added to your health bar and um, it makes the game a little easier with the greater amount of health that you have so you go through the uh, the teapot realm at least part of it and you uh, fight the enemies that you find there one of the interesting parts of this game is that as you defeat all the enemies in a particular area um, either a bumper, a jump pad will appear or a door will open up allowing you to advance to the next area. Most areas in this game cannot simply just be run through. You literally have to defeat all the enemies in the area before you can advance to the next. Um, there are a few exceptions to this rule. 
but for the most part that's how this game is played uh, defeat everything move on to next area defeat everything move on to next area and eventually you make yourself to the make your way to the hatter's room itself and you get on board a teapot or something that kind of looks like a teapot it's a uh, skyway tram or no i guess it wouldn't be a tram i don't know exactly what you call those um skyway carrier and uh while on board of course the cheshire cat appears to tell you that there's some serious problems here in wonderland and he tells you that you need to find the hatter and he doesn't tell you why he just tells you that he might have some information you can use and uh, while all that's happening the uh, carriage that you're in the skyway tram that you're on is being attacked by bolt flies all right so eventually Alice's um, transport crashes through a wall and she then needs to make her way to the factory where the Mad Hatter is and this is where the game really opens up to teaching you and showing you what all the abilities you've acquired thus far are used for you'll find that there are pig snouts that you can hear but can't see unless you shrink yourself and then you'll be able to see them there are um, lots of little hidden places all over the place lots of little hidden tunnels where you'll need to shrink yourself and enter into them some tunnels are shortcuts while other tunnels just lead to uh, memories and memories are one of the parts of this game that seem to be a broken mechanic I think there was supposed to be uh, another mechanic in this game that was either dropped or they weren't able to develop it or they didn't have enough time I have no idea but basically if you are searching all the areas um, and finding all the memories eventually you're gonna run across the door uh, a door where you could see flames you know burning behind it and you open the door and as you go through the door you see a compilation of all the memories that you had collected thus far you know shown in sequence in proper sequence with one another and the thing is is that even if you didn't collect any memories whatsoever up to the point where you reach the door you'll still see that same uh, compilation of memories put together um, I could theorize here and, and say that I think that at one time they were going to try to link the two together to where you had to have uh, so many memories found in order to open the door but for whatever reason that mechanic was dropped or it was decided that it wasn't necessary truly I, I don't know what they were planning to do with it I have no idea but as the game is um, all the fragmented memories are simply um, shown to you regardless of whether or not you find them every time that you have to open a door to proceed further through the game so eventually you make your way to where the uh, Mad Hatter is and you find his head and torso his arms and legs are missing and he asks you to return his arm and legs and he promises that in return he will help you so you fight your way through the factory and you find that the mouse and hare are using his body parts to help run the factory and eventually you get through all the trials to um, have those parts thrown down the uh, trash chute both the arms and legs and you follow down the trash chute as well each time thus leading you to a new area 
And once you have collected all of his arms and legs, um, the Mad Hatter is put back together and he helps you get to a new section of the factory that you weren't able to access before. And then you fight your way through that area of the factory to where the mouse and hare are and they've created a mech and the game sets it up to where you think you're getting ready to enter a boss battle. But uh, before that happens, uh, something falls onto the mech which causes it to malfunction and then fall apart. And once the mech has fallen apart, there, there was no boss battle. The uh, Mad Hatter jumps down and he's most likely the one who threw the object on top of the mech to begin with. At least that's what's implied. And that caused it to malfunction and break apart. Um, and then he tries to serve tea to his dead friends. He never wanted to kill them, he just simply wanted to have another tea party. And while Alice uh, begs him to help her figure out what's going on in Wonderland and why the Infernal Train is causing so many problems, um, the Mad Hatter is mad. He, he can't help anyone. And he certainly isn't going to help her. And he tells her that straight out. But essentially the factory was being used to um, stock and repair and finish the construction of the infernal train. And by the time they get to where the infernal train is, it's too late because the construction and repair of it has been completed and the infernal train takes off to continue its track across uh, Wonderland. And of course Alice is left with the Mad Hatter who can't and or won't help her. Alright, so after you're drowned in tea and you think you're going to die as a result, you wake up in the real world being rescued by a couple of sailors from the ocean. And it's implied that these sailors want to take you to a brothel to do uh, unsavory things with Alice. So, you wander through the town and eventually uh, you meet up with a person who used to um, also be a caretaker at the asylum that you were at. and. Now she's a prostitute, staying at a brothel, and she asks you to come upstairs for a conversation, and you do. While up there, you find that her pimp is beating her and threatening her life, and when you go off on him, he knocks a lantern over which sets the room on fire and then knocks you out. While you're unconscious, you return to Wonderland in a frozen tundra. You fight your way through the tundra and eventually you come to the Mock Turtle. And the Mock Turtle is inside of a um, glass bottle on a ship. And there's a bunch of wooden sharks outside the glass bottle trying to break their way in. Eventually they do break the bottle and the ship dives under the water. Now this is one of the more interesting uh, aspects of the game because there's several different types of gameplay in this game. And one of those types of gameplay is actually a side scroller and you use the ship in a side scrolling man uh, fashion to shoot sharks and fish and other things that are swimming toward you as well as dropping bombs from the ship onto crabs and other things on the ground that are shooting things at the ship. It's a pretty fun little kind of mini game that's part of the game. It's not actually optional but it it breaks up the main gameplay type or style. So eventually the ship is damaged by a shark and crashes at the uh, seafloor 
and you ask the mock turtle about the train considering he used to be a conductor of the previous train and he tells you that he was permanent laid a, permanently laid off in order to make way for the new train the train that is going through Wonderland destroying it as it does um, and he gives you a ticket to a show being put on by Carpenter here at the seafloor so you make your way to the town that the carpenter is in and you meet with the carpenter and he tells you that he needs to put on his play but the um, writer who wrote the script is gone missing and uh, he's probably in a drunken stumber somewhere um, and hasn't uh, either completed the script or returned it to the carpenter he also needs you to get the um, singer who is currently unable to sing because all of the uh, beings that play the instruments have been trapped by the corruption as well as the clams who are the singers um, and uh, they're currently sleeping away So you make your way through each of these areas and you solve various puzzles uh, A lot of the puzzles that you solve are things like uh, sliding puzzles Where you collect blocks to make a picture and you slide the blocks around to create the proper picture that you're supposed to um, Nothing really difficult, but it, it, it like I said it breaks the gameplay out and then after you've done all this and return to the carpenter he tells you that there's one last task and that's you need to put the uh, spirits of dead sailors to rest so that he can have his show unfeathered and uh, you don't really have a choice and he doesn't give you a choice he just simply drops you off at the graveyard and tells you to get it done all right so just as a side note some of the interesting aspects of this game is that as you travel through it alice continues to change dresses you start out with the standard blue and white dress um and then you move on to a steampunk dress then back to a blue and white dress then you go to an underwater dress that kind of makes you look like a a deep sea fish with little glowy spots all over it and uh, then you back to the the uh, blue and white dress and then an oriental dress so to continue the story eventually you collect everything and do everything that the carpenter needs to put on his play and you find that all of it was a ruse for the walrus the walrus simply wanted to eat the clams and he wanted to eat the clams because he knew that it would be his last meal meaning that he knew that the infernal train was coming to the sea bottom to destroy his life as it was and everything there so it was a you know the final meal for the damned sort of speak and as the carpenter tells you that you've essentially missed the, the plot and that uh, the train has been put there deliberately and you should be asking by who and for what he sends you back to the real world where you find that you've been rescued from the burning building and you're in a wagon headed away from it with uh, the uh, prostitute is in the uh, wagon as well you ask her if she knows where your uh, rabbit is and she tells you that uh, the doctor that was at the insane asylum treating you is the one who has it 
and she directs you toward his home. When you get to his home, he ignores everything that you say. He blames you for um, essentially assaulting him with words and shows you your rabbit and then things change drastically and you're in a broken down home that's been boarded up and as you leave the home you're in like a waking dream that's half reality and half wonderland and then it becomes all wonderland a destroyed um, apocalyptic zone of wonderland and you fight your way through it and eventually you find yourself in the land of the Orient after you've smoked enough um, opium through opium pipes to uh, thoroughly get you in the right mood and uh, then you start to uh, battle your way through the Orient in an effort to not only save the paper mache insects from the wasps, but to eventually make your way to Calipiller, who is considered a deity in this realm, and he might have some answers you need in order to uh, stop or destroy the infernal train. And uh, of course you have to pass some tests and there's some more slide puzzles that you have to do. And then you enter a new uh, side scroller um, type game. As you enter pictures, you're returned to a side scrolling type of gameplay with Alice in her blue and white dress. And um, you have uh, jump pads and you have your uh, steam vases um, all the things that you've already encountered and seen in the regular game but now being used and utilized in a side scroller and as you travel through the Orient there are several times that you have to enter pictures and play this type of uh, side game in order to advance through the game it, it's a very unique style and it certainly breaks up the gameplay as you go so eventually Alice makes her way to Calipero, Caterpillar and Caterpillar explains to her that the change that is occurring is damaging and it does need to stop and that she should probably talk to the Red Queen about it because she knows more than he does and he himself is currently undergoing change as well from a caterpillar into a butterfly and as they complete their conversation he turns into a butterfly and flies off when she awakes she finds herself um, inside a jail cell and the police allow her to leave as they only put her in there for her own safety and uh, she walks out of the police station and again collapses to return to Wonderland now there are a few other um, types of gameplay in this game one of those is a rhythm game where you need to press the correct buttons in the correct order and at the correct timing in order to complete that type of you know rhythm game there's also a chase game where you have to um, run away from a uh, enemy that you cannot harm down hallways and passageways where the camera angle is stuck on you so that you can't see where you're running and then there's the slide games where you go down slides and you have to avoid different obstacles 
on the slide as you do so and try to collect teeth in the process. Um, if you fall off the slide, you have to restart it until you can complete it. So there's lots of different types of uh, side games that break up the normal gameplay in this game. And that, that's one of the things that I really do like about it. It's, it's quite entertaining, quite enjoyable. So eventually as you make your way through this um, new land, you find your way to the um, castle of the Queen of Hearts. And of course you're given a new dress in the process where you're given a black and white dress with spades on it. Um, it, it's an interesting game. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of aspects to it that I enjoy. And essentially, as you travel through the game, you unlock more and more of your memories and realize at this point that you weren't responsible for the fire. Neither was the cat. Because the cat's the one who actually led you out of the house. Which is one of the reasons that the cat was still alive. Um, and you realize that there's a reason why you can't remember exactly what happened that night. And a lot of that has to do with the uh, memory block that your psychiatrist has placed upon you. Which is also part of the reason for this game. It's not just to unlock the memories of things that you've forgotten, but to unlock the memories of things that have been deliberately blocked. There's a reason why your sister's room was locked and why she remained unconscious during the fire and the screams and everything else. But you haven't figured out why that is yet. And as you continue to play the game, that is one of the objectives that you're trying to learn is exactly what were the events that led to the death of your family and there are plenty of obstacles in your way not just the infernal train that's destroying your mind as it travels through it but the obstacles placed there as a re direct result of your psychiatrist's um, desire to place as many blocks on your memory as possible which of course leads to many mental instabilities which is one of the reasons why your hallucina hallucinations and your nightmares start turning into daymares and daydreams where both the land of wonderland and the reality of the world around you begin to intermix and merge as one and it becomes harder and harder for you to tell the difference between the two while although you are aware that it's happening you don't know how to stop it so eventually you make your way to the queen of hearts and on the way there of course there's another mini type game where you grow incredibly large and stomp your way around through the courtyard and defeat armies of enemies in that way including the being that you couldn't harm before you simply crush beneath your feet but when you finally do make it to the queen she informs you that the entire problem is of your own making and it is a direct result of your desire not only to forget the past but allow those around you to control you and what you think believe and remember so you ask her if you can get her help in retrieving the memories that have been lost and of course she tells you that you're you've been doing that all along but there are many memories that are still fragmented and those memories are being destroyed and that you have traded the tentacles for the train and the queen asks you why you would do such a thing why you would 
trade her rule for the rule of another, someone outside herself. But eventually she agrees to give you access to some of the memories that she has within her that you have yet to recover. And by doing so, you clearly realize that there was someone else in the house that night. Someone who locked the door to your sister's room. Someone who deliberately set fire to the house in an effort to kill all of you. And that same person is currently part of your life. But you don't know who that is because you refuse to remember. And when you awaken, if you want to call it that, you find yourself in the uh, Rutledge Asylum, remembering that past, where you had holes drilled in your brain to release the pressure and prevent seizures, where you had leeches placed upon you for the purpose of bloodletting, and a myriad of other barbaric procedures done in an effort to cure you of your madness. And eventually, you were cured of your madness and released from the, the insane asylum. But you were placed in the clutches of somebody who meant to do far worse to you. And because you refused to see the world around you for what it is, recognize what it is that is happening in the world around you the result of what is happening to your wonderland is a direct result of that refusal to accept reality to believe the convenient lies rather than accept the inconvenient truth and that is the crux of your current problem so you're then sent to the the realm of dolls and within this realm there are there's lots of imagery that suggest what's actually going on and whether or not you choose to see that is up to you but the Queen has done everything she can to point you in the right direction the infernal train is destroying the kingdom of hearts and you saw that reality as you made your way toward the queen itself. And eventually the train will come for this land as well. And this land is composed of your current memories. Of what is happening around you. The reality that you refuse to see. The horror of what is not only being done to you, but to all the children around you. Those children are not just being driven mad and being harmed, but they're being forced to forget the harm that is being done to them. And that reality is what you must recognize in order to regain the memories of what actually happened. So while you're in Dollhouse Land, the game lays it out for you quite plainly. The doctor that you are currently being treated or is currently treating you is in fact creating child prostitutes. All of his children under his care are sold out to the highest bidder for their sexual prowess and then he makes them forget about what has happened to them and he intended to do the same thing with you now there are a few uh, interesting parts to the dollhouse realm one of them is the pinball game it's another side-scrolling game where you roll around as a head through different obstacles and you have to make it through those obstacles to the end it's a pretty interesting uh, a little side quest game or mini game within the game and eventually as the game persists you actually do get a boss fight at the end of the game and uh, the boss fight is of course the uh, doctor that you're currently under the care of 
And while many things do happen before that, one of the more interesting ones once you finish the dollhouse realm is once you get aboard the infernal train itself and you find that all of the creatures of Wonderland, at least the most notable ones, are on board the train and each of them explain to you the memories that you already knew and the lies that you had told yourself to deny the truth of the reality of the world around you. And the very end of the game, once all of that is done and complete and the, the gameplay itself has completed, is you in the train station arguing with the doctor that you're currently under his care, explaining everything that you've figured out, all the things that you've learned, what he did to your sister, what he did to your family and what he's doing to the children that also live at the home of or at his home under his care and he explains to you that it it may be true but it doesn't matter because no one's going to believe you you're mad you're crazy no one's going to take the word of a mad woman and once you realize the inconvenient truth and the reality of his words there's only one decision to be made and that is to kill this man and you do you push him in front of a train and that does kill him and the only way that you're going to get away with that murder is to return to Wonderland and convince the world around you that you were insane and had no idea what you were doing at the time and this time, unfortunately, it'll be much harder to do that because you have regained a sense of your sanity. But you can lose yourself within Wonderland and make those around you believe that you are insane as a result. And that's what the end of the game is meant to um, visualize for you. That the world of Wonderland and the world around you have completely merged as one. And... No matter who you encounter, no matter who you talk to, no matter what happens from this point forward, it will be an incoherent mess of what is seemingly insane to those around you. Because you will be speaking in riddles and terms of Wonderland rather than the reality of the world in which you live. It's weird, it's twisted, but it does make sense in a crazy sort of way. Um hard to explain to say the least and I don't even know if I'm doing it justice but I got the point I got the reality of it I, I understood where I was going with it. Um, it it's not a bad story in fact it's a pretty decent story um, and it you know it does tell a tale of very horrible things and explains it in a way that is digestible to most people one of the things that I found interesting was that the uh, Twitterati hate this game because of what it depicts rather than accepting it for what it is which is a game that shows the horrors of the world and a way to deal with them and I think that's really what they hated about it is how she dealt with it in prison, some half-wit bruiser will make you his sweetheart, and then you'll hang. Indeed, a hysterical woman, former lunatic, roaring outrageous accusations against a respectable social architect and scientist. My God, Alice, who would believe you? I scarcely believe it myself. You monstrous creature. Such evil will be punished. By whom? By what? Psychotic, silly bitch. Your madness will be punished. Now leave. I'm expecting your replacement.
they don't want that to happen to them so therefore they demonize the game so that others don't get the same idea that's just my thoughts on the matter anyway anyway that's my rant for the day i hope that you enjoy the rest of yours if you could hit the like subscribe rumble follow buttons all that does help and i'll talk to you later